and welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Taz here, the lab coat's on back order, and it's Wednesday, October 25th, which means it's time for another Pokemon news update thingy here on the channel. As I always mention at the start of each of these, I've got a couple of booster packs of Pokemon TCG I'll be opening up towards the end of the video. I've got Roaring Skies and Steam Siege. And as always, you guys have a chance to win the code cards that come out of these for Pokemon TCG Online by answering the question of the day, which I realize already, once again, I haven't thought of it beforehand, but something might come to mind as... Actually, something did just come to mind, but anyway, we'll go with that once we get to that point. But, as we're going to start off with, we'll mention last week's question of the day. The question was, what is your favorite Halloween costume? Either for yourself, or someone else you've seen wear, or a costume that you would like to make someday. So we had two winners for the code cards from last week. Just wait as I plug something in here. Uh, we had two winners. So the winner of the X and Y Primal Clash Booster Pack was a viewer known, or named, Unknown Spike. I should say known as Unknown Spike. Yeah, if you were known as Unknown Spike, whatever. You get what I'm saying. Unknown Spike won the Primal Clash booster pack. And Unknown Spike says... Let's see here. Many favorite costumes, such as Count Dracula, Werewolf, Frankenstein, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Flash, and many more. And they ask, what is my favorite costume? Keep up the great work. And I realized I didn't answer that. I guess my favorite costume, I can splice in a picture here, is... I made myself a King Bowser Koopa from Super Mario Bros. costume. It's not fully accurate to the character, but it's a big fan favorite that people like to see me wear and walk it around and stuff, and it's kind of on the warm side. It's made of, uh, what is it, foam on the inside to keep the shape. It's got uh, fleece fabric on the outside, so it is kind of warm. Not as overwhelmingly hot as I would have expected it to be, though, when I was making it. So the fact that I wore it down at Talcon the first year that I put it together, down in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and within moments of walking through the Scotia Square Mall down there that connects to the convention center, immediately I heard from across the way, it's Bowser! And a bunch of kids come running up to like hug the Bowser suit and get photos and stuff like that, and I thought, I'm going to enter the costume contest with this, but even if I don't win, I just won right now because people love seeing it, and I'm quite happy with that. So, yeah, my favorite, I guess, would be the Bowser costume that I made way back when... That took a lot of work. People have asked me, how long did it take to make, and how much did it cost? And I'm like, I didn't keep track of any of that, because I didn't want to know how much time and effort I put into it. I just wanted to say, it is done. And it is done. So congratulations to Unknown Spike for winning the Primal Clash Booster Pack code card. And the winner of the Sun and Moon Booster Pack that I opened up was a viewer, another regular viewer, named Cheese Dibble the Cat. Cheese Dibble says, my favorite Halloween costume was when I was Red from Pokemon. Trainer Red, ah oh, yes, I remember him fondly, the one that destroyed us at the top of Mount Silver back in the Silver playthrough. Decent costume though, he is... Is it the, uh, the Red from... Actually, that's a good question. Which version of Red was it? Was it from Red and Blue, or was it from Gold and Silver, or was it the redesign from Fire Red, Leaf Green, or Heart Gold, Soul Silver? There's been like four kind of iterations of Red. Have they kept the same costumes from one game to the other though with the remakes? That I'm not sure of, but either way, we know who you are. The original Pikachu trainer from Pallet Town, of course, Red, the Pokemon trainer. So congratulations to both viewers for winning those code cards, Unknown Spike and Cheese Double the Cat. It is now time to pop into the majority of the news section here, as I scroll myself to the side. A lot of TCG stuff to mention, a lot of collection packs to talk about here. So let me just do this. I took photos in landscape, why am I holding a portrait mode, right? So the first thing we're talking about is, since Shining Legends is currently available now in certain collection boxes, a collection box of the Shining Legends Super Premium Collection, which features Ho-Oh, is currently available to pick up at different participating stores that sell TCG products. So in this, you're going to find an amazing sculpted figure of the legendary Ho-Oh, which is pretty cool. You get a figure in there, you get a little promo cards, a lot of uh, booster packs as well. You also get a full art rainbow rare of oh, Ho-Oh GX, but it's a uh, promo card, so it's not as rare, so to speak, as the standard rainbow rares, but it's still rainbow rare, which makes sense for the rainbow colored Pokemon of Ho-Oh. You also get two foil promo cards of Shining Lugia and Shining Celebi. Pretty cool, some Gen 2 Shining Legendaries for you there. A foil promo card of Pikachu, not Rainbow Rare, not Shiny, just Pikachu, but it's Pikachu, so that stands to reason it's the most important Pokemon, right? Debatable, but it's pretty popular, of course. You also get 10 Pokemon TCG Shining Legends booster packs in this collection, a playmat featuring uh, 9 Shining Pokemon on the playmat, 
You get a special booklet with behind the scenes look at the art of Shining Legends. You get three collector's boxes to hold all of your cards with 12 dividers to keep them all organized and a code card to use in Pokemon TCG Online, which I would assume unlocks all these promo Shining Foil cards, maybe the Rainbow Rare, well, most definitely I'd say the Rainbow Rare of Ho-O-G-X, and the Pikachu. And probably, I would think, some deck sleeves card box kind of thing. Possibly stuff like that. What did I just say? Deck sleeves? Card sleeves. Deck box. Why can I never get those right? But anyway, the Shining Legends Premium... What is it called? Shining Legends Super Premium Collection. I almost left out the Super part. You can pick that up at, I believe, any participating re uh, retailer that has it available. Another cool collection coming out here, though, featuring Team Skull. The Team Skull Pin Collection is available. Kind of interesting to see Team Skull getting some love here. It includes such Pokemon as Salazzle GX, which I believe was Plumeria's main Pokemon, and Golisopod GX, of course we all know Guzma using that one, and what else do you get here? The pin, of course. Let's just read the list down here. You get uh, four foil promo cards of Wimpod, Salandit, Golisopod GX, and Salazzle GX, of course. You get a collector's pin of Team Skull, five Pokemon TCG booster packs, I don't think you get any of the Shining Legend, but it looks like some Sun and Moon packs. And you get a code card for the Pokemon TCG Online. Again, I would say unlocking all these promos, possibly card sleeves and a deck box. I said it right this time. Had to take a moment to pause, though. And it is currently available to pick up where TCG products are sold. So if you want to get some Team Skull action going on, pick up that collection. Also available for Pokemon TCG, some Mysterious Powers tins. In these tins, as you can see here, you get the powers of such Pokemon as either Ho-Oh GX, Necrozma GX or Marshadow GX, and I'm pretty sure they are the exact same playability card as the current ones in the expansions, but it is of course a promo card. I really like the Marshadow idea of using any of your basic Pokemon's attacks from the discard pile. Again, Night March is a front runner for that idea. You could, what I did in my video, put Clefairy from Evolutions in there. With three energy, you can use any of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks against them. Kind of fun. I think it's any. Is it just active? It might be any. Either way, in these tins you get one of those three foil promo cards based on which one you select. You get four Pokemon TCG booster packs and a code card, again, for the promo. Maybe card sleeves, maybe deck box. You can find out by picking up one of those tins and inputting the code. And now, a cool little thing happening at Toys R Us. To celebrate the upcoming holiday season, they're giving out special Pikachu ornaments with qualifying purchases. So you can see here, we'll run down the images of the different Pikachu collections or Pikachu ornaments. I believe it is two candy canes for one, a Santa hat for another one, and holding a wrapped present for the third ornament. So what you have to do here, starting on October 29th, which is just uh, four days away from now, you have to purchase Pokemon products of $25 or more while supplies last, and you can collect these uh, unique ornaments, and only one is available per week during the uh, promotion, so it's going to go for three weeks, I believe it says. The, what is the first one saying? I think... It doesn't say what order they're going to be in, but... Every week, if you go back and spend at least $25 in Pokemon TCG products, you can get each of these Pikachu ornaments. I might see if I can get those. Try to spruce up the backdrop for Christmas season as we come up here on the channel. Not just on the channel, in the real world, I guess, too. Christmas isn't just about my channel, but it's a big part. Anyways, so you can pick those up starting October 29th, and for one week each, you can get those ornaments, like I said, purchasing $25 worth of TCG products from Toys R Us. Doesn't say if it's just the US, or also applies to Canada. I'm hoping Canada, but I'll find out when I head outside and head to the mall today. Alright, so again, we have Pokemon giving out the special Ash Hat Pikachu distribution through Pokemon Sun and Moon right now. This is the final Ash Hat Pikachu you can pick up. It's funny, it says, donning a classic chapeau, yet it's the Alola hat. Is it even considered classic at this point? But then was Kalos considered classic right now? That's also debatable, much like Pikachu being the most important Pokemon, but it is an important Pokemon and it is an Ash hat that Pikachu is wearing. So the Alola hat Pikachu you can pick up now by going to your mystery gift on the main screen in Pokemon Sun Pokemon Moon, enter your gift code, your gift code, enter the mystery gift code, I guess, yeah, get via code. Code is, as always, Pikachu20. And for this week, you'll be able to pick up a level 19 Pikachu. So he has leveled up to 19 ever since back in the Kanto days. Nature is still hardy. Of course, it is still a male Pokemon. He has static for the ability. The moves are Thunderbolt, Quick Attack, Iron Tail, and Electro Ball. So if you want the Alola Hat Pikachu, I didn't get one yet, so I might as well pick this one up. 
I really would have wanted the uh, Kanto hat, but I completely glossed over the fact that those were being given out when they were given out, so I missed out on that, unfortunately. But I could get the Alola hat. In fact, I should probably do that as soon as I'm done recording this video so I don't forget. But if that's the one that you want, you can pick that up. So now we're going to end off the sort of news photo coverage here. We're going to skip over to the Pokemon Sun and Moon website because some new information regarding this whole Necrozma fusion with Solgaleo Lunala is revealed here on Pokemon Sun Moon, sorry, Pokemon-SunMoon.com slash Ultra. So, new Z-moves for Solgaleo and Lunala. In Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, new exclusive Z-moves make their debut for the Legendaries, Searing Sun Rays Smash, and Menacing Moon Rays Maelstrom. There is one other Pokemon that can learn Sun Steel Strike and Moon Dice Beam, the moves needed to unleash these moves, Necrozma. Interesting that it can learn those moves. Could it always learn them? I don't seem to recall it could, but I could be wrong. Anyway, Necrozma that knows Sun Steel Strike or Moon Dice Beam can unleash these moves. Really? Interesting. So, what they say about these Z moves in a moment here, you do need this proper Z crystal. So, does that mean that, uh, hang on. Let me just double check this. I'm getting confused here. A Necrozma that knows these base moves can unleash those attacks. So, the Z crystal, as you see here, the Solganium Z, is not exclusive for Solgaleo. I guess the Necrozma that knows it can use it too. It's probably going to be the uh, Dusk Main Necrozma, of course, though, right? I would think. Anyway, Searing Sunrays Smash Z move. The Searing Sunrays Smash is a new Steel type Z move that can be used with Solgaleo, no Sun Steel Strike, and has the Solganium Z. This attack damages the target while ignoring the effects of its abilities. A Searing Sunrays Smash from Solgaleo will be extremely powerful. Yeah, it shows the Dusk Main Necrozma here. Look at the text on that one. Searing Sunray Smash. I like this. I saw the trailer. If you haven't seen the trailer, go check it out. They go into Ultra Space to use this, right? And it just launches a big, massive attack. Look at this big, tumbling ball of destruction. Oh, onto a rock type. That is super effective. And ignoring the sturdy ability. So that is a one hit KO, I'm sure. Scrolling down, the menacing Moonray's Maelstrom Z move for Lunala. It's a ghost type attack. The Lunalium Z. Lunalium? Yes, Lunalium Z is the Z Crystal, of course. It also damages the target regardless of the ability. So, let's check the photos here. There is the Dawn Wings Necrozma. Menacing Moon Rays Maelstrom. There's a big, creepy eyeball in the middle of that one. Going into Ultra Space, launching out like... Oh, I saw this. It launches like six beams, and then they all converge on the target. It's kind of crazy looking. And ignoring Disguise of Mimikyu. That's nice kind of happy with that one and there we go so that is the images for there but this is interesting too powered up rotom dex the rotom dex is a special item a pokedex it's a pokedex a tool that records information about pokemon but it has rotom inside we know all about this as you glow as you grow not glow closer to rotom as you communicate with it you'll unlock more features and stuff rotom's personality changes based on how you communicate with it i wonder if that means now it's just like a base rotom then as you interact it becomes friendlier or can you actually almost like the moves of return and frustration can you make rotom not like you i wouldn't want to do that but the option if that is in there would be kind of interesting they don't really do stuff like that that often other than frustration it's personally changed based on how you communicate with it perhaps the rotom that joins you will come to act, come to act a bit like you that would be cool if somehow your personality gets kind of rubbed off on it. Deepen your bonds with Rotom as you travel around the world of Alola. It'll make your adventure more lively. So this looks pretty standard. Where is this location at? I think this is a new spot you couldn't get to before because this is the berry field on the bottom right. Right? And that's the motel that you talked to Looker at at one point. I don't think you could get onto this beach before, but now it looks like you can. Okay, so you do answer questions. Congrats on passing. Sorry, congrats on passing the trial. If I had a heart, it would have been pounding the whole time. And your response probably tailors what Rotom, how it acts and stuff. That's cool. Oh, is it blushing? It's blushing. How does Rotom blush exactly? Anyways, scrolling down. Rotolato. Rotolato is a feature that lets you get items from your Rotom decks as you get closer to Rotom. These special items that you get from the Rotom Dex's Roto Lotto come in various or different varieties. Some increase experience points or prize money, while others make it easier to catch Pokemon. So it sounds like, what was it? The, uh. What were those called? The O powers of X and Y. So that's kind of interesting. They're kind of coming back. 
Now this is what I kind of like, and this is what I think, if it's implemented in TCG, could break the TCG in some way. Use Z moves again with Rotom's Z power. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wait, was there a gallery? There was. Before we get to that, let's check the gallery. We have an up. Rotom experience points. Increase the experience points of your Pokemon after battle a little bit. Okay, so you get to choose which one you want to use. Roto Hatch. That's cool. I'll be at your service! Zip. Your Pokemon will receive extra experience points now. Okay, but this is it here. If you come close enough with Rotom, it'll use a special power for your for you called Rotom's Z Power. This lets you use a second Z move in battle, even though you normally you're even though you're normally limited to using only one per battle. This is kinda nice. Receive my Z-powered friendship support! Z -Z. Thanks to Rotom support, you can use Z-power again. So you can use, I believe, two per battle. Unless it's sort of like an unlimited thing in battle? Who knows? But maybe Rotom itself can only use its own Z-power once per battle as well. But it lets you use yours a second time. So again, if this comes into Pokemon TCG, what do you think would happen there? That would be kind of overpowering. Think of, like, Charizard GX with its G, uh, GX move. Burn 10 cards of the opposing deck off the top. Do it again, another 10 cards. That's like one third of the deck discarded. I don't think we're gonna see this in TCG, but they've surprised me before. Who knows, it could come in full force and turn the TCG upside down. So that is going to be it for the news update. Let's get back to my big size here, as it is now time to pop open these two booster packs of Roaring Skies and Steam Seeds. Let me grab my scissors here and give you folks the question of the day as I drop the first pack on the floor. Hopefully the cards are not dented. I'm sure they're not. They should be fine. And for your chance to win one of the code cards I'll pull out of these booster packs in just a moment, just answer the question of the day. And next week for the news update video, I'll choose two lucky commenters from within the comments and include hashtag QOTD in the comment with your answer and you have a chance to win one of these code cards drawn randomly. So the question is going to be, in reference to the fact that we've now had all six Ash Hat Pikachu given to us through the distribution, which region in the Pokemon world is your favorite and why? Just leave that answer down below, include hashtag QOTD, and you have a chance to win one of the two Pokemon TCG Online code cards, as always, that we'll be pulling out of here. In fact, let's get this first one out of here before I answer my own question. Make sure it's not focused the wrong way, and we are good. Off to the side it goes. So my favorite region, I'm thinking nowadays I really do like Alola, but somehow I still like Hoenn for the fact that they had contests. So ribbons are one of my favorite things in Pokemon in any version of the game. The fact that you can decorate your Pokemon with memories of what they've done, where they've been, what they've accomplished. I really like that. And Hoenn, well Sinnoh had ribbons for contests too, but Hoenn is where ribbons initiated or originated. So. I really do like Hoenn for that uh, aspect. I can't really choose one region, however, because it's like every region has something I like about it. Maybe not Unova, but we'll get to that when we get to the Gen 5 playthrough. But yeah, Hoenn brought ribbons. I really like that aspect of it. But I really like Alola for the Alola forms of Pokemon. And the Z moves. I really like Z moves. And I like Kalos for Mega Evolution. So. I can't choose just one. So if you can't choose just one, list all the regions that you like and what is most memorable, what your favorite thing is about each region, and that'll be your answer for the question of the day. All right, so without any further ado and rambling, let's do our little switch around for the cards. Let's see what cards I get from my booster pack. We're going to start off with a Fletchling from the, was it Roaring Skies, Pikachu. We have Pidove. Bagon is next, and the last common is a Tailo. Uncommon card, starting with a Latio Spirit Link. We've got an Exeggutor. Unpheasant with... I like that Strong Winds attack. Shuffle all cards attached to each player's Pokemon into that player's deck. That could set back the opponent quite a bit. Reverse Foil is going to be Execute, that's being attacked by Spiro. And what I really like is the fact that Exeggutor is fighting back. Whoops. Fighting back against the Spiro once it evolves. The rare card of Roaring Skies is... A Delta Trait, or sorry, Delta Plus Ancient Trait Articuno. People love this card. If this Articuno knocks out a Pokemon, you take an extra prize thanks to that Ancient Trait. And you can get some good damage off of Tri-Edge. Two, or sorry, 20 damage plus, flip three coins, 40 more damage for every heads. Not too bad of a card. Not an EX though, and not a sort of secret rare, so hopefully we'll get something like that out of the Steam Siege booster pack. So, let's tear this one open. And by tear, I mean carefully snip and cut. Let's grab that code card. Is it the right way? Yes, it is. 
So that again goes off to the side as we grab my 10 cards from this pack. Hang on. I think I did that right. I've done this so many times, how could I mess it up, right? Should be common cards starting with a Nidoran male. There is an Oshawott, good old C word from our Innova days, Ponyard. We have Tangela. Last common is a Joltik. Uncommon is beginning with a Skip Plume. A Ninja Boy, an interesting card, of course. Ooh, the uh, dual type Azumarill, Fairy and Water. Reverse foil card is a Bastiodon. The rare card from Steam Siege, Chandelure. Not as super rare as I would have liked, but it has a pretty cool ability, which up until Slush Rush of Sand Slash or Alola Sand Slash, this was a good way to work with your Swampert with the Diving Search Ancient Trait. Once during your turn, look at the top two cards of the deck, put one in your hand, and discard the other. So the Swampert could let you choose one of your cards from the deck, put it on top, then Chandelure lets you look at the two of them, choose the one that you wanted, and discard the other, unless the other was a better card. Who knows? But that is going to be a wrap for today's Pokemon News Update video thingy. Hopefully I taught you some new things you weren't aware of. Maybe you're going to be getting some of those Pikachu Christmas ornaments with the Santa hat, the candy canes, all that good stuff. And just pick up some of those collection boxes like Team Skull. That'd be cool. That might be a good thing to put on my Christmas wish list, actually. Pin the old Team Skull. Pin on the uh, jacket. Walk around town going like this the whole time. You know, that wouldn't look stupid at all, I'm sure. But anyways... That's going to be a wrap, so stay tuned later today for a, another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness as things start to really pick up. Some familiar faces come back, I'll just say that, and some interesting new mechanics of the ore region do come to light, and we now gain access to those as well. But, of course, if you want to see some more videos I've done, you can check the links during the outro to some videos. Or if you want to subscribe for some daily Pokemon content from the good old professor here, you can do so during the outro as well by clicking on my face and get your daily Pokemon updates when videos go live. But with that, we are going to wrap things up and get rolling for the day. i got some Pokemon, spooky Pokemon to catch a Pokemon Go. Thanks again for watching, folks. Professor Chaz is signing off, and as always, I will catch you next time.